Hi guys, welcome back to the channel again. In this tutorial, we are going to do a basic install of the Xmonad window manager. I'm going to focus here on the basic installation of the packages and also the configuration file to get you started. And in the next tutorial, we're going to go a little bit more in depth about the configuration file and also we will activate Xmobar. So let's get going. So here we go, we are ready to install the Xmonad window manager. I'm assuming that you followed already the installation of Arch Linux in the previous tutorials. So I'm just going to hit enter here to start the system. It's going to take a moment to boot up and we can enter the username and the password. There you go. Now let's clean up the terminal. I'm going to increase the font sizes here in the console because we have to perform some tasks here before we start the window manager later. So I already installed the terminals font in the installation here. So I can increase the fonts now by typing in set font and then ter for terminals font dash 128n. So I'm going to go with that 128 points and hit enter. So it's easier for you to see as well in this console. So let's clean up the terminal and proceed by installing the packages we need for Xmonad. So let's type in sudo pacman dash syy. So we want to refresh also the servers one time. And the packages are the display server. So in my case, I'm going to install Xorg and I'm going to install the whole group because I need several components from there. But you don't actually need to do this. You could install, for example, only Xorg dash server if you don't want to install the whole group. But as I said, I need several components from here. So I'm just going to install the whole group anyway. And this time I'm not going to use XNETRC for starting Xmonad, but I'm going to use a display manager instead. And for this tutorial, I'm going to use LightDM. So I'm going to install LightDM and LightDM needs also a greeter. So I'm going to install also LightDM-GTK-Greeter. And I'm going to install also the Xmonad package. And I'm going to install also the xmonad contrib package, which includes some extra scripts for Xmonad. And I'm going to install already also Xmobar, although I'm not going to use it in this tutorial, but I just want to have it installed for the next one. And I'm going to install also dmenu. And for the compositor, I'm going to install pycom. I'm going to install also nitrogen, which will help us for the wallpaper. And I'm going to install also browser. So in my case, I'm going to install chromium and also a terminal. So in theory, we should install actually Xterm because that's the terminal that Xmonad detects by default. But I'm gonna install Terminator and change the configuration of Xmonad before starting up. So I'm not gonna install Xterm. And for the terminal, as I said, I'm gonna use Terminator. Now I'm using Terminator here because it has already some options predefined, which I'm gonna make this tutorial a little bit easier. But if I would be installing this on my machine, I would probably use termite or urxvt as a terminal of preference anyway the packages are now complete so we can hit enter and enter once the sudo password and hit enter and accept the defaults here for xorg and proceed with the installation so it's going to take a moment here to download and install so i'll be back when it's done there you go the packages are installed so we can clean up the terminal and the next step is to enable the display manager so we can type in sudo systemctl Enable light DM and hit enter. And now probably you can skip this step, but I need to change actually one setting in the lightdm.com file. So to do this, I'm going to type in sudo vim slash etsy slash lightdm slash lightdm.conf and hit enter. And I need to do this because I'm on a VM. You probably, as I said, don't need to do this, but I need to scroll down here to the seat section and change the display setup script here. So let me uncomment this line by deleting the hashtag because I want LightEM to have the same resolution as the display. As it's not recognized by the VM, I have to put this in manually, but as I said, this is probably not your case. And the command is gonna be in my case, x render dash dash output, then virtual one, this is the name of the display, and then dash dash mode, and the mode is 1920 per 1080. Then I can save the file and exit Vim, and clean up the terminal. Now I want to create the X profile file to set some options in there. So I'm gonna type in vim and then dot X profile. This is a brand new file, it doesn't exist. And the first thing I want to set is actually my keyboard layout because when I start Xmonad, I want to have my keyboard there. So I'm gonna insert a comment here just to have things in order. And I'm gonna put in here keyboard layout. And the command is gonna be set XKB map and the connotation of my keyboard is CH 
you might have to adjust this, of course, accordingly. And then the ampersand. This is important to have at the end of the command. The next command I want to use is nitrogen, so that we choose a wallpaper and we have it always available to us when we boot up the machine. So I'm going to insert a comment here, and I'm going to type in, in here wallpaper. And the command is going to be nitrogen dash dash restore. And then the ampersand again. And the next one will be the compositor. So I'm going to type in here the comment compositor. And the command is pycom dash f for a fade. That's going to provide a fade effect between the windows. And then the ampersand. So that's going to be it. And I can save the file and exit Vim. Now, because again, I am on a VM, I need to change also one line in the PyCon configuration file. So let me clean up the terminal and I'll type in sudo vim slash etsy slash xdg slash pycom.conf and hit enter. Again, you probably don't need to do this, but I need to turn off here the vsync option because it's not supported in the VM. So I'm going to search for vsync. There you go. And I'm just going to put a comment here and then I can save the file and exit vim. And clean up the terminal. Now we're not ready to reboot yet because we need to still create the configuration file for Xmonad. Now let's type in ls a and what I want to do here I want to create a dot Xmonad directory so I'm going to type in mkjr and then dot Xmonad and hit enter. Now let's move into that directory by typing in cd dot Xmonad and hit enter and let's create a new file which is the xmonad.hs file. It's the configuration file for xmonad, basically. So we can type in vim xmonad.hs and hit enter. Now, xmonad does actually have already a configuration file by itself, but I want to start up the machine having my personal configuration. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to use a very basic configuration, which you can find also in the ArchWiki. And it's just to show you the purpose of this configuration file. And we're going to work on this in the next tutorial more in depth. The thing to keep in mind is that Xmonad is written in Haskell. So if you don't have any knowledge about this programming language, it's going to be a little bit more complex to configure Xmonad. I don't actually have so much experience with Haskell. So everything you'll see in this tutorial and in future tutorials are going to be referenced by wikis on the Xmonad website and on the ArchWiki as well. So let's get going and let's create the first simple configuration for Xmonad. So we need to define first the import function and the standard one is going to be import Xmonad. The import function has to be on the top of the file. In later tutorials, we're going to add other import functions, for example, for Xmobar. But for this tutorial, import Xmonad is enough. Then we can move down to the next line and we can define a main function. So we'll type in main and then equal and then Xmonad def. So we're going to define a personal setting for Xmonad. And in the next line here, we are going to enter here the curly brace to open the function. And the first parameter I want to define is the terminal. And I want to say that my terminal is actually terminator. So I'm going to type in here equal and then in double quotes, terminator, close double quotes. And then in the next line, I'm going to define the next parameter, which is the mod key. So by default, the Xmonad used the alt key as the mod key. I want to use the windows key. So to do this, I'm going to type in, in here mod mask. And then again, I'm going to define this by equal. And the Windows key is defined with mod4 mask. Now, we could go down and define other parameters. But for this tutorial, this is going to be enough for me. So I defined here Terminator as a terminal. And the Windows key or the command key, if you are on a Mac, as the mod key in Xmonad. Now, we need to close the function here. So I'm just going to enter the new line and close the function by typing in the curly brace. And then we can save the file and exit Vim. And now we can reboot actually the machine by typing in reboot and hit enter. It's going to take a second to do that. Now here is grub. So let's hit enter here to start the system. And if everything were well, we will be greeted by LightVM. And there you go. So we can enter our password and hit enter. And we don't see anything because Xmonad comes with actually a black background. But now if we hit mod shift enter, we have our terminal here. So everything is working fine. Now let me right click here on the terminal and go to preferences. I need to change some things in here. I'll go to profiles and change the font. I'm going to select as a font here, source code pro. And I'm going to go for the regular version and I'm going to bump up the size to 16 and check off here the title bar. And I'm going to make the scrolling here go away. I don't need to see that. And for the background, I'm going to go with the transparent background 
to 90% and click close. Now we don't see transparency because we don't have any background yet and we'll adjust this in a second. However, let's hit again mod shift enter to open up a few more terminals and we see it's working fine. So let's close those up. Let's see if the menu is working. So let's hit for example mod P and the menu is appearing on top. So let's open up Chromium by typing in Chromium and hit enter. I'm going to look for a wallpaper here. So I'm going to type in again Japan 4K wallpaper and hit enter. I'm going to choose, for example, this one here. I'm going to select this bamboo forest here. And the resolution is fine, so I click download. And there you go. And we can close this up and close up Chromium. Now we can open Nitrogen. Again, mod P and then Nitrogen. And we can configure this by going to Preferences. And Add to add a directory. I'll go to My Directory here and the Downloads folder and click Select. And then click OK. Select the wallpaper. And I'm going to go here for the zoom fill and click apply. Now we can close nitrogen and we have our wallpaper there. So now if we open up a new terminal, we should have our transparency and indeed it's there and it's working fine. So let's open up again Chromium one more time. And now we have two windows open. Now, even if we don't have XMobile active yet, we can still use desktops. So for example, if I hit mod shift two, the Chromium browser is going to be moved into the second workspace. So if we hit now mod 2 to go there, we have our Chromium web browser there for screen. So the shortcuts are very similar to the i3 window manager. So mod shift and a number is going to move actually the window into that workspace. And the mod key and the number is going to bring you to that workspace. So to move back this window to the first workspace, we hit mod shift 1. And to move back to the first workspace, we hit mod 1. And there you go. Now, to close the window, we hit Mod Shift C. And to exit Xmonad, we hit Mod Shift Q for quit. And we go back to the Display Manager. Now, the Display Manager here has a black background because we don't have the LightDM settings package installed yet. We can install this from the AUR, and I'm going to do that maybe in a later tutorial. But we are focusing here on the Xmonad Window Manager and not so much on the Display Manager yet anyway. So let's log back in. And let's open up a terminal again with mod shift enter and a second terminal again. Now we can switch windows here with the mod key and the J and K keys. For example, if I hit now mod K, the focus is going to go on the terminal on the right. And if I hit mod J, the focus is going to go on the window on the left. Now, if I hit mod L, it's going to increase the size of this window. And if I hit mod H, it's going to decrease the size of this window. So we have basic functions here for resizing the windows as well. Let's close this up with Mod Shift C. And this is going to do it for the basic installation of Xmonad. As I said before, in the next video, we're going to go more in depth in the configuration file and we're going to activate also Xmobar. But for now, I encourage you to play around with these key bindings and to change eventually settings also in your X profile to suit your needs. And I'll see you then back here in the next tutorial. So this is it for the basic installation of Xmonad. I definitely encourage you to go ahead and try out the key bindings, get familiar with Xmonad, because in the next video we're going to go a little bit more in depth about the configuration file and also activate the Xmobile panel. I hope you liked the video guys, if you did please hit the like button below and subs to the channel if you haven't already, subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal through our website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video guys and I'll see you soon in the next one.